goals that are done that had to uh, get it done in the city. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but then school yeah. in cosmetology school they didn't even um, they didn't even require us to do any pedicures during our training mm. you only learned the chapter in the book oh. yeah so all of my techniques and methods I've developed and you know got proficient at yeah. over the years yeah. You can bend your knee. So are the courses you're teaching now, is that in addition to the, the required program or is it part of it? Is in addition? It's in addition. Yeah, they don't teach what I teach in school. Do you have children? I have a grown son. Um, he's living with us uh, at the moment. So it's actually been kind of nice. It's last year to have him in the basement. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, at least you don't have to deal with all of this school stuff that's going on. Oh, no. toenails curl a lot oh do they well just like you know around the tip of your toe yeah most people's toenails are flat yeah so i don't want to cut your skin so i'm just being careful because you've got a lot of compacted material underneath there's something was was causing the pain but i of course couldn't, couldn't really see what it was yeah what causes the, to the toenail to curl? Dehydration, you've got a touch of toenail fungus. You can see this discoloration and the lines yeah. going this way. That's from your toenails pinching down. I'll have you get a product called nail mycosis and you'll use it like um, a cuticle oil and put it on the tip of your toe uh -huh. so it moisturizes and gets underneath there. So tight. Well, I was a slave uh, to fashion for years and wore just whatever the most stylish shoes I could find. Right. And probably wasn't the best for my toes. Used to always wear heels. Um, but the older you get, it's harder. Your ankle or your joints just uh, don't support it. Yep. Do 
did you know there are different types of nail fungus? I will give you a snippet here. There are mold fungus, yeast fungus, athlete's feet fungus, and dermatophyte fungus. And sometimes the nail can have more than one. I teach you all about it in my specialized pedicure course on my online nail academy. That module is included in the pedicure certification course or individually and that training is about two hours in total so there's a lot of information on it so check out academy.themeticulousmanicurist.com yeah that's what's causing all your discomfort right there Soak again. Where is your accent from? Iceland. Oh, wow. goes away. I've been here a long time, but it just doesn't go away. I love to hear people talk from other places. Where did you meet your husband? Um, I met him uh, when I went to architecture school. Oh, nice. We met, actually, we were taking a, a, a prep course uh, to get into architecture school. Oh, wow. And one of the courses I had to take was physics. And I had just arrived, spoke a little English, and physics was really hard. <laughs> it is really hard to really speak English, I think, but it's double hard. And uh, I sat next to him and uh, I was able to copy his homework when he <laughs> showed up for class. <laughs> and then uh, I did pass the, pass the course to C. And I was able to transfer it to the architecture school. I got a credit for it. He transferred a year later, did not get credit for it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> funny. Yeah.
What's the most fun building you've ever designed? Uh, let's see. I've done a lot of uh, I've done a lot of work for a Northwestern um, School of Management. So uh, that's been fun to do. Their funding is easily generous. Uh, but then I really like a, a couple of a couple of schools private schools that I've done that had uh, you know, smaller foundations. You have to be creative with the materials. Uh, one was a charter school and one was a, actually an athletic center for uh, kids with uh, uh, learning differences. Uh, so I've been, I've been lucky. I've had a chance to work with really good, uh, good architects and uh, Recognized people. It sounds fun. Have been awarded, so, so that's always a that's a special bonus. Mm -hmm. Get all the, the long hours you put in, the all nighters, and all that. So just let your feet be, yeah, there you go. I will answer the most frequently asked question on my channel. Why don't you wear gloves? Number one, I am a licensed nail technician in the United States and we are governed by a board of cosmetology that has rules for patron protection and disease control. This is not the medical industry and we do not expect to make people leak. But if we do, we have protocol to follow and will put on gloves. The best way to protect yourself from germs is washing hands. I wash my hands before and after each service and the client's feet are being washed and disinfected in the pedicure tub the entire time. We also use hand sanitizer in between as an extra measure. Number two, glove use is not to protect the client. Gloves are not sterile. They are made in a factory where people handle and pack the gloves without wearing gloves, and they're all squished in the box all together. Sterile gloves are individually wrapped, and that is for the doctor's use. Number three, I'm not going to contract fungus from touching it. Fungus needs a warm, dark, moist place like shoes to grow. It's not impossible, but it certainly is improbable, and in nearly 30 years of doing nails, I've never contracted any adverse conditions from a client. Number four, you do not have the same feel, touch, or control while wearing gloves. And yes, doctors wear gloves, sterile gloves, while doing surgery because they are elbow deep in body fluids, and I am not. Number five, it is not a law in the United States to wear gloves. It is an option in the beauty industry, but we don't wear gloves to give manicures, haircuts, facials, or massages. So I hope this clears up why I don't wear gloves. How's this one feeling? It feels fine. I was actually nervous uh, to have you touch it. <laughs> but I, I barely feel it. Good. Does it feel like I've gotten out the part yeah. that was painful? Yeah. yeah.
Are you staying in town tonight or are you driving home? I'm driving home. You have got some stamina. <laughs> we just drove up to Minneapolis uh, Saturday morning. It was my sister-in-law's birthday. What did he think of you driving all of this way? My husband? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> did he come with you? No. Oh, he was, uh, he was at home making uh, corned beef and cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> and I was glad to n not be there for that. <laughs> my favorite. All right, you can bend your knee and just put your foot right there. wants to grow like a little box. It's got four corners. <laughs> Have you been watching the channel for a long time? watching it for a few years. Uh, okay. First I was looking for tutorials I could do my own nails because I, I used to get it done in the city. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but then of course when I was working from home you know, I wasn't going to drive an hour to Chicago to get it done. Mm -hmm. So I looked it up. I was just searching and I came up actually interested. I thought about maybe if I was just going to be working from home about maybe doing like um, or offering um, not volunteering but offering to the, the elderly ladies in town maybe go, be able to do their nails or stuff oh. house. but I didn't know you know what kind of what you needed to know if I could yeah. do that so that's why I was following you there for a while uh, but then I realized I couldn't do it I can't really see you well enough to do my even my own nails <laughs> But I just remember my grandma always being so happy uh, when we came by. She always wanted us to do her nails and fix her up a little bit. And, and I thought that would be something that would be, you know, make an elderly person or an older woman happy. Yeah. They came to the house and pampered them a little bit. Yeah, you do have to be licensed to work on people. Yeah. You can do your own or like your granddaughter, but there's too much liability yeah. involved to do anybody else. Yeah, how, how long does it take to become licensed? If you go to school full time, depending on what state you live in, it's like four months. Because you have to go 40 hours a week. Yeah. If you do part time, I, some schools let you do part time, twenty hours a week, um, but it just depends. So uh, I know there's a lot of these chain. Uh, yeah, that is true. Um, but yeah, you just don't know. That's why when you go into a salon, you have to make sure that they have a license hanging on the wall. And if there's six people in the building, then there should be six licenses with different names hanging on the mm. wall as well. Yeah, I've never noticed it, but I haven't been looking for it.
What did you stub your toe on? I didn't see anything. <laughs> oh, I was either I remember if the dog ran into me or if I, you know, hit something. Um, Your toe doesn't really want to go down, does you know, it? This, this happened after the surgery. Oh. Um, yeah, it wants to step off. So what did they do? They removed a bunion? Yeah, and they did, I think they had a pin or something in this toe. Oh. And then they did this toe as well. Huh. So uh, yes, but I remember bringing it up uh, after this with the doctor and she said, you know, the tendon was probably a little too tight and it would require a, a small surgery to fix that and I was like, no, couldn't deal with it, not at that time, but uh, yeah, it's kind of annoying. Like, but, uh, How long ago was the surgery? How long have you been an architect? How long have you been an architect? Uh... Sounds like fun. It is often. Awesome. It's uh, lived through several recessions, so architecture used to suffer pretty early on in recession. Yeah, with, with the, building. the building. Yeah, um, but. I specialize in institutional and educational architecture. So that often doesn't slow down quite as early as residential or high rise work. Yeah, state funded. State funded, but then it takes a little bit longer for that to, to uh, recover. But uh, we've both been very busy here in this. Uh, Lockdown. You know, there's a lot of people who lost their jobs, so we were lucky to still have jobs. So this is the cuticle remover. Yeah. So what made you finally decide to make the trip? Yeah, I've been meaning them for a while to come. I actually made an appointment, or tried to make an appointment last fall, but everything was, or you guys were shutting down, or, and, uh, and then I just decided to wait until everything was, you know, pretty back much open. back open. Uh, and that kind of 
feels like that's now every, everybody is uh, pretty quickly opening up now that the vaccine is available. Yeah, we've been open since June. June of last year? Yeah. Oh, really? We were just closed March, April, and May. Oh, wow. Another frequently asked question is, why do nails push up and then start to pinch in? When the nail lifts from the nail bed, debris gets caught underneath the toenail. Imagine laying a tent on the ground and then raising up the center post. This changes the sides and they travel inward. And the same happens with the toenail. When debris gets stuck underneath, it pushes up on the toenail and then the sides come in. But when that happens, new debris gets stuck along the sidewalls and then the nail can't travel back. So if you're not cleaning out from underneath your toenail and cleaning down into your sidewalls, that could happen. So keep that underneath the nail clear and as her nail um, moving forward, she starts to use the nail mycosis product, it will flatten back out and go back into the proper shape. There's a lot of businesses who are trying to open up, but they have no employees. <laughs> it's like every window you drive by has a help wanted sign in it.
Yeah, after, um, so you, you have a couple of the things that would make you predisposed to ingrown toenails. I mean, you do have a super high hyponychium, so your toenails attach really up high, but you have deep nail grooves and you have a little hook on the side of your, of your toe. Mm -hmm. But if you start using the nail mycosis solution, after today, if you keep using it even like um, two or three times a week, you shouldn't ever have another problem with your nails. Okay. Uh, oh, because yeah. it's going to add enough moisture to your nails where they're going to flatten out a little bit because they are so arched. Oh, okay. I see. That it's, pull, it's changing the direction of your nail wall. Mm -hmm. See, your nail wall should come out straight like this. Oh, I see. But it's getting pulled over. Oh, I see. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So how many states have you guys gotten to with the baseball stadiums? Uh, well, we had already been to quite a few before we got married, but uh, oh, well, uh, I have a lot of status I still have to go to.
think the West Coast would be fun because that would be a fun uh, trip. Just drive to the West Coast. Drinking the not fluid uh, may have uh, contributed to the toenails scrubbing or no? Mm -mm. It's just the. Uh, it's usually either from shoe wear, something like people who wear shoes that have cork as the sole of the shoe. It sucks all of the moisture out of your feet. Oh, really? That's interesting. Yeah. Because Birkenstocks are. Yep. Wow. When your toenails get too long yeah. and there's no nail bed under the nail plate holding it in a flat position, there's all that free edge just hanging out over the tip of the toe. Yeah. So when it gets wet in the sh shower and then it curls mm -hmm. as it dries in, so that can happen, and since you have such high attachment points of your toenails, it's probably really hard for you to keep your toenails cut short all of the time. Because your toenails look so long even when they are short. Just relax your toes. Yeah, in six weeks, you'll have brand new toenails. Yeah, from like from here to here, mm -hmm. see that different color of your yeah. nail plate? That's like a pinkish, yeah. orangey color. And then you can see those lines going down. That's the all, that's all the deep dehydration. Just, just pulling everything in. Yeah, I had noticed they were very dry looking and even just cutting my toenails, they, they seemed to crumble. Mm-hmm. Can something similar to happen to your fingernails? It can, yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen as often on the fingernails. The toenails, nail fungus grows in warm, dark, moist places. Mm -hmm. And our fingernails are getting washed frequently and they're exposed to air so it does not happen as frequently on the fingers Should I just put like a drip on the tip of your toe? Make sure that it runs down into the corners. Just dab it around like that. Just one drop. Once a day? It's best to do it twice a day okay. for the first couple of weeks and then you could go to once a day. Just keep it on your nightstand mm -hmm. so you don't forget. And just put socks over it or? Or, My dog is gonna lick this off. Yeah, yeah you can. You can put socks on. <laughs>
It does. Like I'm missing some polish on different places from holding the cotton. The cotton ball dripped on me a couple times today. My nails were nice over the weekend while we were out of town. This is your hyponychium, the skin right there, so you don't want to trim that. Okay. That's live. That I think I have it on one fingernail too, where the girls are really far the nail. How do they feel? Good. Good. Really good. 